Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions from the worlds of TV, film, music, pop culture, news, sports, social media, everything really depending on the guests. We talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Miotis. On social media, you know me as PD Beats. My guest is the vocalist of a band called Brand of Sacrifice. We are with Kyle Anderson. Kyle, welcome to Pop Turnative, man. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Um, and we were kind of talking before this. I mean, you know, it's one of those things where you've been doing this for a good amount of time. I remember those days I mentioned bands three bands ago. You know what I mean? The Memphis West. I mean, you've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, I guess I've uh, I've been in a few bands there over the years. Uh, it's always been a passion of mine, uh, metal music. So um, I've kind of been in and out of it over the years, uh, but uh, I can never really uh, stay out. That's for sure. Absolutely. I was talking to JB from August Birds Red about this recently, about breakdowns. Your bands, like especially Centuries Apart, when I heard Malachi for the first time, that song was on like heavy rotation because that's literally just like ear candy breakdowns. You know what I mean? What do you think is so kind of appetizing about a breakdown? Do you even know how to answer that question? Like everyone asks me why people like, like why I like breakdowns. And sometimes I have a hard time answering that question. Like I don't really know. Like I just like them. <laughs> I think uh, because it's a useful dynamic. Yeah. So songs generally will build up and you can even see this in uh, genres like EDM or dubstep. They'll have sort of a, a climax and then they'll release with a drop. It doesn't have to necessarily be metal music when it comes to breakdowns, um, but it's a dynamic and it's a release. And it's also usually rhythmic, uh, whether it's the drums playing a similar rhythm as the guitars. Uh, you can headbang along to it and you can dance to it. So it's one of the more uh, accessible parts of uh, maybe some more extreme music. And I think that's why it's so beloved in the core scene, in my Absolutely. opinion. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, Bride of Sacrifice um, have a lot of really good songs. The the, the newest release, like the, the latest release that you guys have is just amazing. Um, Thank you. One song that comes into mind, though, obviously, is so Eclipse, right? So we're going to talk about Eclipse for a little bit. So here's the thing. I'm a big, like, I'm one of those guys that I'm a vision guy. I want to do a lot of things, okay? One of those things I want to do is I'm really into horror movies, and I'm going to write, I'm, I, I want to write a horror movie. I want to make a horror movie. Oh, and cool. we're going to talk, and we're going to keep in touch one day, and I'll talk to the managers or agents, but I'm sorry, but Eclipse was made for a horror movie. <laughs> I can kind of see that. So, it, no, it, it's, it's like that like that breakdown at the end. That literally is, like, made for a horror movie. <laughs> Yeah, I could I could feel that, especially when it comes to like the uh, the choir uh, sort of section before the the breakdown kicks in. So, so when did that come yeah. to be? I need to know because I love that song. I need to know what was kind of the behind the scenes of making that song with the choir and everything. Uh, so that song was actually the very first song we ever wrote as a band. Surprisingly, <laughs> um, it's a popular one, right? It's one of the most popular Brad of Sacrifice songs. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely is. Um, I think it's specifically because of that that one section. Um, but, um, I, I can, honestly can't even answer how that really happened. It just kind of was a natural progression. It just, mm -hmm. I, I sort of sent over some influences and ideas to, uh, Leo, which is, who's the primary writer. And he also produces and mixes the, the band's music. Um, and, uh, he sort of came up with that as the first, uh, move towards what we would then become at that point. So, um, yeah, I, I felt like that was just it just everything just clicked with that song, even though it's a shorter song. Yeah, it is a shorter song, but it really it doesn't waste time at all. Is that kind of something with Brian and Sacrifice too with this band? Like this band obviously has some songs that kind of um slow burn and then get very heavy and get very kind of breakdown y and very melodic. But I mean, there's a lot of songs on Brian Sacrifice that don't kind of waste time. Was that kind of the goal of the band sometimes? Just kind of go in with kind of a punch right away with some of your songs? Yeah, I think we've always tried to uh, lean towards more of a sort of hype standpoint and um, sort of keep things short and sweet. Yep. That's been the the approach. Um, 
our, our full length record is, is pretty short if you look at the actual play time over the whole uh, album. But we just we wanted to give the listeners uh, we wanted people to want more. I yeah, think. absolutely. So uh, that's sort of been the idea. And the new the new record is a little bit longer, but it's still kind of to the point as well. Absolutely. And it's I just pulled up, you know, the band Spotify right now. And, you know, 87,000 monthly listeners of Brand of Sacrifice. Like, does that blow your mind a little bit? Like, that's a lot of people listening to your band yeah. on a monthly basis, man. Yeah, definitely. I didn't <laughs> expect that. to. I mean, we didn't even expect this to be a, a full time band, to be honest with you. It was a it was a side project for fun that uh leo and i sort of made maybe just to make one ep and call it there call, and call it there yeah um but uh then it ended up being the the primary focus over the after image which is, which is crazy to me to think about since we put seven eight years in the after image so i know oh man it's been you were banned for that long eh the after image yeah. it's crazy yeah the pathogen is like one of the greatest one of the best songs. Yeah, <laughs> Thank that you, song man. i don't know man it's just like that song there's a lot going on in that song but it's just like very kind of like there's there's some there's a very good kind of build up in that song I find and there's a lot of technical things going on. When did you kind of decide like Brian of Sac like Brian of Sacrifice and the After Image because you mentioned there are some members from the After Image that are Brian of Sacrifice, but there is differences with the sounds of the bands. There are you know what I mean. Yeah, like, sure. Was that like is that kind of just the how things go like bands just naturally like evolve sound wise like that kind of happens right? You want to try new things out honestly i think this band is so different because i chose to create extreme music i always wanted to do a project like this even back since 2013 which never really had the time to do it mm -hmm. and uh leo took a step back from the band towards 2015 mm -hmm. um and he wasn't really writing music he was kind of working towards his more professional career um in the tech industry um in the states there um but uh he was he had uh, a craving to make some heavy music. And I said, Hey, I want to make sort of a deathcore record with some slam influence. Uh, are you down? And he's like, yeah, I'm totally down. I haven't written for a while, stuff like this. And, and that's kind of how it came to be uh, in the first place. So do you find it, is it, it, it's interesting too, because like Spotify, like we, I have my like yearly rap, right. And it says like what you listen to and how many songs you listen to. And it told me that I listened to like over like, 200 genre, genres of music and it's like that's a, that's crazy to me you know what i mean there's a lot of like sub genres and everything i mean like you said like deaf core and everything but it's just like do you find that like we're kind of stepping away from like these specific genres and like it's all just kind of classified as like different variations of you know metal and death metal like what do you think about the classification of genres kyle i think they're starting to become more blurred these yeah, days um, back in i guess you could say the myspace days uh <laughs> you and i are pretty familiar with that i mean people were very uh specific about things because that's just the way that's just the was the language at the time yep. you know they wanted things to be in a specific box so you'd be like you know what this band is a technical deathcore band or you know this band that has it plays nintendo core i don't know like you know there's so many crab different core, things about right? crab, crab core, core you know there, there's all kinds of specific boxes that people wanted to put bands to where i think now you know you could say this band has this influence or that influence but they're still at the heart of it they're the metal and hardcore mm -hmm. or death metal and hardcore whatever you want to say so there's not a lot obviously of touring going on now with the pandemic but you know yeah. and I, I talk to everyone and everyone in bands you know misses touring like crazy they just kind of it's black and white they miss doing it um but like going before the pandemic i mean i've been on tours like touring is difficult it's not for everyone but people love playing shows and everything like for you specifically like you've been doing it for quite some time i mean how do you kind of just like block out a lot of the unfortunate negative things that could happen with touring you know what i mean like being in a van for a long time you know stuff happening bad weather and everything and how do you kind of block that out and just focus on like the good things and the task at hand like playing in front of people and everything like what what are your touring kind of methods kyle it's not for everyone yeah it's definitely a difficult lifestyle um uh, i personally thrive in that kind of environment which is why i keep coming back to it uh, as you can see but uh <laughs> When it comes to having issues on the road, uh, you know, I've definitely kind of succumbed to 
negativity in certain scenarios. Like when we've had scenarios where our entire transmission died or, yeah. you know, and like uh, parts of your vehicle are coming off on the highway when you're yeah. driving, things like that. <laughs> and it's very easy to, you know, be super upset and, and give in and, and want to give up. But I think uh, you kind of just take things uh, one issue at a time and uh, talk it out. And especially it helps um, uh, Michael uh, Leo, the guitarist, who is sort of the primary writer. He He's not on the road for every tour. Uh, he'll uh, he'll come on a few select tours per year, but um, it's 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 good to have communication with someone that's off the road to, and with a clear mind. And when you have a problem, you can kind of bounce ideas off that person and have a different perspective than you know everybody who's sort of freaking out when there's a problem like a vehicle issue or something like that. So um, I think it's important to just have conversations with other people, take a step back, you know, think about the big picture, and, and then you'll solve that issue. Uh, as you go because it is like it's a grind especially for a lot of canadian bands with like those like the the, the weather conditions that come sometimes man it's it's not it's not a good time sometimes yeah certainly <laughs> uh we did a, a run earlier this year in january with shadow of intent and uh signs of the swarm and, and fury and uh that was uh there was some some interesting weather especially uh early in the tour we played a show in uh pittsburgh and that night we started seeing like crazy snowstorms and couldn't even see the lines in the road and things like that. But yeah, again, it's just one of those things, just you take it as it comes and, you know, drive slow on the highway if you need to and follow the lights. Uh, but uh, it's just part of the the business sometimes. What, what were some, so every band is going to kind of be like, anytime you're in a band or anytime you're even just like, not even music related, just like, Anytime you work on a project or at work, it's always going to be kind of learning experiences. You know, we talked about how like we, you were, like the four bads, you know, started the Memphis West and Ascension the Park, then the After Image, and now Brand of Sacrifice. With Brand of Sacrifice, what are what learning experiences have come with that territory, Kyle? For you specifically, whether it's you know learning things on the road, whether it's like learning things as a musician, like musicianship, like what learning experiences have you gotten from being in Brand of Sacrifice? I think uh, I've never really been in a band that has sort of played the caliber and level of tours that uh, Brand Sacrifice has been lucky enough to be a part of, such as like the Summer Slaughter tour, for example. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, who was on the was, one you were on? Like, who was on that one? So the headliner was Cattle Decapitation um, and the Faceless Card Effects. They were sort of um, those are the, the three, the, tri the triple headliner. And then uh, uh, Lorna Shore was there, uh, Necrogoblicon, um, That's and stacked. Uh, Rivers of Nile as well. That's stacked. So it was uh, quite quite the tour. And, and were, you the, were you guys the opening on that? We were the opener for yeah. that for that tour. That was our, actually our second tour as a band, surprisingly, mm -hmm. was uh, Summer Slaughter. But uh, I think you know we did that tour is pretty difficult because we did it in the summertime with a van with no air conditioning. Yep. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, we, had, we were pretty short on on drivers that tour, so it was really a test of endurance and uh, patience, and uh, you know, just trying to keep calm as much as possible. And as far as the actual tour went, we we learned a lot from the other bands, and you know how they conduct themselves on stage. You know, making sure that you're timely with uh, rotating your gear and all kinds of stuff like that. How things work on the back end, uh, sort of business stuff as well. Um, so we learned a lot from that and we were able to apply that to, uh, other tours that came after that. So I think that's a, a really good rite of passage, that tour for a new Absolutely. band to be able to open that up. So for sure. Well, Kyle, thank you so much for coming on the show and taking some time to chat. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Um, so, I mean, wherever people listen to music, I mean, they could check out Brian, a sacrifice right now. Yeah, for sure available on spotify um any apple music any sort of uh streaming service youtube things like that mm -hmm. available on there i also stream on twitch sometimes uh twitch.tv slash kyle of sacrifice we do kind of music reactions and gaming and things like that too so well i found eclipse on like uh Jar jared they did like um like a breakdown reaction like top 10 breakdowns okay jared dines yeah yeah, yeah. jared dines they put eclipse on that so that those 
that that's pretty cool that like those like reaction videos and those lists like they help like a lot of bands like Certainly. sacrifice yeah for sure which is i awesome. really appreciate him uh including us in that absolutely did you kind of like was did, did they like email you that they, you were going to be on or did you just kind of find it on the internet because i feel I like were, yeah. we were on tour at the time and uh <laughs> someone messaged me on instagram was like hey you're in this video i'm like oh that's awesome I'm um, sure that kind of maybe like I'm sure you definitely saw a little bit of like a spike because people see that video and then go see listen to the song. Yeah, Spotify. we did. We we certainly did, and that's why I'm extremely thankful for. And honestly, any content creator that you know reacts, wh whether they're a small creator or a larger one like Jared Dines, I mean, we appreciate all of it. Um, you know, we're we're very humbled by those who you know um, enjoy what we do and want to talk about it, or even if they have criticism, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. We just appreciate people uh, in taking the content. So there's over one, there's over a million streams of Eclipse on Spotify, which is crazy. Yeah, I didn't uh, ever expect that that would be a thing, to be honest with you. But um, very humbled by Spotify it. Spotify is like a bit. It's crazy because like I do YouTube, right? And you know, you know YouTube, right? YouTube kind of YouTube's difficult. It is, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's hard to get a lot of views on YouTube. It is, right? I feel like with Spotify, just like the consumption, like the numbers, like it's crazy. Like I have guys that like that are friends of mine that are in bands. Like they released a song in like one and one week later, it's like eighty five thousand streams. Like it just, I feel like it hits super fast. I find sometimes on Spotify. Yeah, I think uh, the the nice thing about Spotify is they're pretty artist friendly as far as you know. You can submit for official playlisting as a completely independent artist. That's not something you're gonna find on YouTube. They're not gonna feature you on the front page as a small creator. Uh, it, that It's all based on the algorithm, right? And yeah. uh, so, you know, if your music fits and, and they like the songs, they'll often uh, add you to things like that. So yeah, uh, and I think I think your band's on. I think there's like a deathcore playlist that I think Brad of Sacrifice yeah. is in, which is like a, it's a it has you're in some pretty good company with that playlist. Like there's some cool bands in that playlist. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's the that's the big one. Uh, one of the main ones for kind of music that we're involved in, and um, like it, there's like you said, there's a lot of great bands on there as well. So absolutely. And where can people follow you? And then where can people follow the band on social media to keep up to date with everything? Um, you can find me on Instagram, Kyle of Sacrifice, uh, Twitch as well. Uh, same thing with Twitter, Kyle of Sacrifice, all the same name. Um, that's uh, as far as the band goes. Um, Facebook, we're Brand of Sacrifice Metal. Same with uh, Instagram, and uh, Twitter is uh, Boss BOS Death Metal. Amazing. Well, seriously, man, thank you so much for doing this. I really, really enjoyed chatting with you. And yeah, thank uh, you, man. Yeah, e Eclipse uh, was one of my top five songs, of the, uh, stream songs of the year, which is pretty. Damn, crazy. dude! Appreciate I listened that. to that, but man, like I, listen, I remember like in March and April, like that was like the start of the pandemic. Like I literally did nothing but listen to music. So I remember like there's just a bunch. Like most of my top listens are like songs from like that like <laughs> month, and that was one sure. of them because I found the Jared Dines um, playlist, and I was getting I don't know maybe it was just I was just like in like kind of anxious moods but i just listen to a lot of like death metal and death core <laughs> sometimes it's good to help release man yeah no it is man thank you so much um this has been pop turn of youtube.com slash pop turn for previous episodes until next time this is kyle from brand of sacrifice and pd beats signing off thank you for tuning in to pop turnative make sure to check out our past episodes of pop turnative on youtube be sure to like pop turnative on facebook and follow us on twitter This has been an Autograph Communications production.